everyone, it's Lauren here. Thank you for stopping in and checking out my latest project for Pink Fresh Studio as part of my commitment to the design team. Now, I, when creating this layer, I had a little bit of an idea in my head, but not much. Hence why I'm showing you all these products that I was thinking that I might use. Some of these don't make the cut on the layout, but some of them do. And the, the, Little gorgeous delightful ink cubes that you see me showing you there definitely make the cut because I went a little mixed media crazy on this layout. The colours that I've used in the inks are olive which is a beautiful green, candy violet, storm which is like a dusty blue and ocean breeze which I think out of these for ocean breeze I think may have stolen my heart. So I had these gorgeous photos of Katie and Elsa sleeping. I caught her the other night. Um, I, I went in to give her a kiss and make sure the blankets were on as us mummies do. And there she was fast asleep with Elsa's little paw in her hand. So I quickly snapped a photo and snuck back out. Even though the flash went off, she didn't move. <laughs> And then when I had a look at all these beautiful products from Pink Fresh Studio in their new Days of Splendor collection, I knew this dreamy blue one with the constellation and the florals was the was the cardstock that was going to um, match these photos perfectly. So as you can see, I have started by gessoing a white just white cardstock there, plain white cardstock, and then using that beautiful constellation uh, feature piece of cardstock there, I've torn an edge, a diagonal edge down the page. Now the one beautiful thing about the Pink Fresh Studio papers is they're such high quality. When you do a tear, you get that beautiful white edge in in there. They're double sided, so later you'll see me roll those edges up, and you'll get to see a little bit of a peek of the pattern paper that's on the reverse, which is a lovely way of sort of creating that beautiful blend and that continuity between um, my pattern piece onto my white set my white section there so the other way of me blending from that really heavy pattern piece of paper onto the white section is using mixed media now I knew she was sleeping asleep with Elsa and I was trying to sort of keep true to the photos which was sort of dreamy and um sort of I just wanted to create a magical page and keeping in mind those constellations that really I think stole my heart when I saw them on this page so I picked out some of the colors which I rattled off before um, and that coordinated with the the florals and the blues in that pattern paper and I using as you can see acrylic block there I've just smushed a bit of the ink on there added a bit of water on my brush and then all of a sudden it's almost as though I've got a liquid watercolor there and I can maneuver it around and sort of play with it and blend it as as I see fit by doing that now as you can see I'm drying off between each layer and that's something that I really like to do because you get that real pooling effect it, it has a way of sort of helping the colors have their own individual layer and not sort of blending into a big brown brownie yucky mess so just by drying off between each of the layers you can see that although I've put that lovely violet over the top of those two darker colors they it still stands out at as its own feature if that makes sense so have a go at it if you like this kind of mixed media work try drying off between each of your layers and I'm sure that you'll be able to kind of get that depth that I'm that I've created there it also tends to push the pigment out to the edge of the little droplet so you get kind of like a bit of a border going on which I really love those lines that you can kind of see through that mixed media section there, that is my gesso. Uh, I don't mind those lines. Um, that's what's happened when I put my clear gesso on the page. I've scraped it through with my silicone brush and they're the lines that you're seeing there. If you don't want those lines, when you're applying your gesso with a silicone brush, what you need to do is brush in one direction, so say up and down, then brush the opposite direction, side to side, and then diagonal diagonal and then the other diagonal and you need to just continually kind of do those motions in all different directions and all of a sudden those lines will disappear so that's an idea if you don't like those lines in the background there
I always have some watered down white acrylic paint on hand just for those white splatters. I always love white splatters. It tends to be my go-to all the time and it just creates that little bit of magic and when I'm trying to make this kind of feel really dreamy and like spacey and magical those white droplets as you can see have just sort of finished that off there. Now here I am I'm thinking what am I going to do with this and I thought I'm going to fussy cut some of these bits of the border there and you'll also see that I'm going to fussy cut some of those constellations and I wasn't really sure at the time what I was going to do with them but I didn't want to waste any of that paper and I thought I'm just going to fussy cut them out and it sort of created my own little ephemera pack so I'm just sitting them there and they're rolling around in my head um, as to what to do so here you can see I'm just rolling up those edges there and you can see a peak of that reverse side which is this gorgeous gorgeous light aqua color with little white moons all over the back look at that isn't that pretty it's so hard when this collection it's a side and it's b side are as beautiful as each other i'm just lucky that i've got the paper pack and i've got two of each <laughs> so yeah as you can see i've put a uh, wide tape there in those sections and I've put thin tape up the edges because I always like to layer and tuck things into things so I don't ever like to adhere right up to an edge because I always end up pulling them up and trying to sort of build them around there so here I was I was really struggling here I had my photo I didn't want to lose all that lovely beautiful mixed media work there so I'm just sort of toying around and I end up just using that one three by four inch landscape photo to um, pull this layout together the photo that you see the portrait size one there that you see just sitting there I simply just cropped that that one photo that horizontal photo and sort of drew that in um, and that was sort of a a nice idea when you're wanting to sort of focus in on a little feature of a photo that you could try and do that and just sort of crop in on a photo and just get out that little bit little bit that you want to sort of feature but still have the full photo there um, as well so that that was sort of an optional it's the same photograph but just different styles but it's an interesting way sometimes when you're just trying to get draw your eye to a little bit of a detail in the photo there so this is where I was still playing around and I was sort of thinking what am I going to do as you saw I didn't really know where my photo was going to go but it does end up staying where it is there and here I am I'm just playing around tucking all those little bits that I fussy cut out to sort of bl help blend and transition that ripped section down into my mixed media section if that makes sense I've also used a couple of um, one of the new cut files that's a available um, I will link that below so you know where to access it and it's just a beautiful little border floral leaf one it's a great one for your sets because you can put it behind anything and especially if you cut it onto white cardstock it's really that neutral um neutral cut file that you can blend and add extra florals and it just creates more depth without taking away from the color theme that you're working with at the time as always, I tend to do lots and lots of layers behind my photo and I ruffle up the edges because what I'm really wanting to do is when I create really busy layouts like this with mixed media work, I don't want to lose my photo as being the feature of the layout. This is what it's all about, isn't it? This is why we love scrapbooking. It's about documenting memories and telling a bit of a story about a memory. And it's also about looking back on a layout and it triggering a memory for you. So my photo, and I, I always do this, I always multi-layer multi that, rough up the edges so it kind of gives the photo a cuddle and, um, you know, bend it and twist it and tear it a bit. And that really, when I'm working on it, on the when I'm working on it in, the, in its entire layout, you can tell that it sort of just pops off the page there. Mind you, in saying that, the next vid video for Pink Fresh Studio, which I have started working on that layout, I haven't done this. I've stepped outside my comfort zone. <laughs> so you'll, when you watch my next video for them, you'll have to see um, whether I it's a yay or a nay for whether Lauren should be mounting up her photos or not. <laughs> but there you go. As you can see, just by adding those little layers around there and roughing up the edges, all of a sudden my photo is a center stage there and all that beautiful mixed media work and that, that strong colored pattern paper and all those florals that are really working really hard um, are in the background and not taking over from the photo there. 
So as you can see, it's kind of coming together. I'm still just playing around here, adding layers. Although those florals there, you can't really see them. When you look at it, the layout in, in, in real life, it just creates a little bit more texture on the layout. And that's what I really love. I'm just using my favorite wet glue at the moment here, which is a Nuvo. I think it's called, what is it called? Nuvo Deluxe, uh, Deluxe Adhesive Craft Glue. Um, I, I love it because it dries clear, it's easy to use, it's got a fine tip and it also has a gorgeous diamante on the top <laughs> when you put the lid on. So how can you not have a gorgeous diamante glue stick in your craft supplies really? <laughs> Anyway, I'm also roughing up the edges of some of the embellishments, which just adds a little fine white border there and helps it sort of bring it to life. You'll see when I add some more embellishments, I'll do that too. And then I'm just going for it. I'm using foam adhesive on some of the leaves, foam adhesive behind the moon and the... Um, the little planets there and the little shooting star and then the others I'm just using the wet wet glue to stick down and that's just creating different layers on my layout there to sort of br bring it to life bring it to life without too much dimension that it's going to be a really bulky thing in your albums when it goes in there how delightful are those little constellations now as you can see I fussy cut that out over those beautiful out of that beautiful pattern paper but the one beautiful thing about Pink Fresh Studio Papers is that the cardstock quality is so thick and beautiful that you can fussy cut out something so delicate like that and it almost turns into a piece of ephemera it's that quality and sturdy as well so that's really wonderful this little set here is some stitched frames and stitched embellishments. Boy, oh boy, I love it. I love them. Love it when embellishments come already just loved up. So I do end up fussy cutting this little one out. It, this one says nighttime magic and it has a moon there, a little tag and some white stitching across the top there. And um, it doesn't end up there. It's going to end up somewhere else in a second. But um, I just really wanted to kind of play around and work out what embellishments were going on there. There's two ephemera packs in this collection. One's just full of florals and the other one is more of a traditional uh, ephemera pack which has frames and titles some florals some tags and banners and things like that and I've decided that I'm going to end up with the let's get cozy and like a dream little banner there which I rough up those edges so here you can see I'm just playing around with what works and that floral the let's get cozy that beautiful nighttime magic there um, are the sort of the the ephemera elements that I'm going to stick with for this one I'm also going to have a play with the fabric bows here they are the fabric bows are just delightful and I really recommend that they are a little fiddly to put together I will give you that but what I usually do um, is when I'm watching a movie out in the lounge room and I just want something in my hands just to play with I'll sit and I'll put all these together and therefore they're in, back into the pack already turned into bows and it just creates a really um, quick and easy absolutely stunning embellishment there so I just went off camera while I did all that fiddly work because I didn't want to see I'm sure you didn't want to see me trying to maneuver all those with adhesive and I've got a delightful little a four winged bow there and um, that just is going to cut all that title and just make that gorgeous little embellishment cluster there on the side so have you guys seen this new days of splendor I have done a, an unboxing video of this entire collection um, I'll link that below so if you want to have a look at it it is absolutely stunning for your um, autumn slash fall uh, themed photos it is beautiful and warm and the colors are stunning and it feels like just a cozy cuddle how gorgeous are those puffy stickers I didn't end up using any of those but I know that every layout that I'm going to do with this collection I'm going to pull those puffy stickers out because I just absolutely love them so I'm just coming in now to do some journaling with my white uni ball pen sometimes it's a little temperamental so I like to check it um, try it out on another side on another bit of scrappy paper there and then I'm feeling confident to go in and add my journaling so a little bit of journaling there just touching up those edges because my uni ball's nearly running out adding some lines and then I'm going to do some 
just hand drawn little stars there just to bring that constellation um, to life uh, a little more. So there you have it. If you haven't heard of Pink Fresh Studio, which I'm sure you all have, but if you haven't heard, I'm going to, all the details are in below. It is a beautiful, beautiful company that creates beautiful, high quality scrapbooking supplies that I know that you are going to want to have in your stash. All right, guys, there's my layout all done. I hope you've enjoyed this process video. Take care. Happy scrapping. Bye.